Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video for Honeybee Stamps. Today we are going to be working with the Lake Scene Builder uh, Honey Cuts and uh, the Coordinating Stencils as well as the Be Still Sentiments. And then I also used the, um, oh I can't remember the name of them, the Stitching Rectangles. Um, so anywho, we're going to be cutting out a lot of these because we are making a multi-tiered pop-up card. This is so different for me. I'll, I'll explain to you how I got here. Um, but I'm going to go through and I'm going to cut multiples of this uh, mountain scene here. I think I ended up cutting four or five. And then I also cut out the little canoe and the little oar. How adorable are those, honestly? Um, and then we're going to get into the stenciling portion. If you're just here for the like construction, you're probably going to want to jump to around, I think the 15 minute mark. It's later in the video. I got to do all the stenciling first. Um, so here I'm just using my Altenew sticky mat um, to put my die cut piece in place. And then I am going to go in and I'm going to do all of my ink blending. Now, I did all of the same ink blending on every single one of these pieces. I don't know if that is necessary, but I knew that you were going to be able to see like when it popped up from the side and the top and stuff, you would still be able to see the other pieces underneath. So I colored them all so that way there would be color for all of them. Um, but if you're not concerned about what it looks like behind the other piece, um, even though it is visible, you could probably skip it. But because the layering stencils are so fast, um, it really didn't, I mean, it really didn't take that long. I just um, did the same set, like I just went through and knocked them all out. So I did the, all of the first stencil through all five, all of the second stencil through all, I think it's actually four, not five. Um, but anyway, how did this, how did this come, come about? Well, I needed a birthday card for my brother-in-law. His birthday is July 11th and his wife's birthday is um, a bit earlier in July the 3rd, I believe. Um, and so I had a card that would be suitable for her, but I did not have a card that I felt like would be suitable for him. And I struggle with masculine cards. I think a lot of people do. Um, and so I really wanted to use the uh the lake scene um because uh, my husband and his family grew up they had a lake house well first their grandmother had a lake house and then they ended up purchasing one and like that's where they made a ton of their memories and so i wanted to do the lake scene but i don't know if you've noticed um the lake scene's wildly popular because it's great it's fantastic um and so many people um, have been using it and so many people on our design team have been using it as well. So I was like, how am I going to use this lake scene but make it different than what everybody else is doing? Like, I don't want to just show them the same old, same old, you know? And um, so if you're curious, I know sometimes, sometimes you can't see the color that I'm using. They'll be linked below um, in the YouTube description. So then I got to thinking about some other... Um, ideas, like card ideas I had on the back burner for things I wanted to do. And one of them was a pop-up card, which I had seen several months back. Jennifer McGuire had done like this little frame pop-up card um, that were really, they seemed very simple. Like, thank God for her engineering brain because I couldn't come up with it. Um, but it seemed really fairly simple. So I was like, well, could I make this a pop-up with the lake scene? And yes, <laughs> in fact, I can. Um, it did become a little bit more involved than I initially expected, um, but I'm going to be honest, that was my own doing. And the reason for that is sometimes you just have the way something should look in your mind and you can't let it go, no matter how much work it is. And that is what happened to me, ladies and gents. I could not, <laughs> I could not let it go. Um, so there ended up being a few more layers in here than I initially thought that there would be. Um, but I think it came out super cute. And this one, because of the, the scene that I chose, was a little bit more challenging and it did involve some fussy cutting. But Honey Bee has a bunch of other scene builders. They have like the cottage countryside or the seashore or there's another mountain one um, that are actual dyes that could be layered. Um, like they all cut out different various layers of the scene. Um, 
and I think that those would probably be a better fit for this technique, but I'm going to show you how to do it without without the dye, y'all. Um, we're going to do it, and it came out, it really did come out cute, and then I told Eric, your brother's probably going to throw this card away, and I probably shouldn't have spent so much time on it, but um, <laughs> I couldn't stop myself. I could not. Um, so yeah, so that's that. Uh, as far as the ink blending um, goes, like I like to add shading to all of mine. I am not a big fan of just putting down one color. Um, so that's what you see going on here um, is, you know, typically I'll put down a base color and then I will, you know, add a darker version of that to shade it. Or in some cases, like with the, not these pine trees, but the previous pine trees, um, I put another color over top of it. I put down mowed lawn and then I put down peacock feathers, which kind of gave me like a lucky clover type color, uh, which I could have just pulled that ink pad out, but honestly I didn't even think of it. And then I sheeted it with pine needles. So I just like to have a lot of color variation because I like for my scenes to have a lot of depth, especially if I'm not going to be coloring them. If all the shading I'm going to be doing is with ink blending, then I'm going to use several different colors to get the look that I want. So, and these are, I, I don't know if you can tell because honeybees are clear. Um, if you've never used their stencils before, all of their stencils are etched with the design. So even if that portion isn't cut out, the design is etched in there. And so it makes them so easy to line them up, like so, so easy to line them up, which I really appreciate. So this is one of the um, full pieces done. And this is then I proceeded to go through and do all of the pieces with the same exact shading. So now here, I originally had done a salty ocean sky, but I didn't like it. And I'm cheap, so I'm not going to waste this paper. I'm going to flip it over. And then um, I used for the water, I used salvage patina, mermaid, no, salvage patina, peacock feathers, and then mermaid lagoon. And so for the sky, I just wanted to reflect those same colors. So I used the salvage patina and the peacock feathers so that my blues were very matchy matchy, um, which honestly makes for a more cohesive look, but also makes my heart happy because I like things that match. Here's where this is this is the part I think everybody's going to be like, no, thank you. And I get it. I totally do. Because it is, um, not everybody enjoys fussy cutting. I don't mind fussy cutting. Um, and even though, um, like you can see here, basically I went through and I kept one piece completely intact for the background. Then this is the next level. So for this one, I'm going to go through and I'm going to trim out the top mountain portion. So I'm going to leave the bottom mountain portion there and I'm just trimming around the trimming around the trees like Christmas. Um, so I'm just trimming around the, the trees there. I understand that this part can be a little bit tedious, but I think the end result is really worth it. Um, and if fussy cutting is not your jam, then I would suggest trying it with one of those other uh, scene builders where the different levels are actually cut by the dies, and then you could just cut multiples of the dies. So then once um, all of the, that, that one is done, now for this, um, what am I doing here? That's the one that I left the background. So now for the next one, I need to go in and I need to take it to, that's what I was trying to figure out. Um, I need to take it to the water line. So I'm going to trim out all of the mountain and those trees in the back. I'm going to take all of that out. And so I'm going to trim around the right hand, like the pines that are closest to us. I'm going to trim around those and then straight across that water line, which is going to be my third tier um, so all of that background will be removed. And then each one of these is going to be a different level that pops up and gives us that super fun dimension that you get from a pop up card. Um, oh, I guess we'll talk about the frame when we, when we get a little further down. So anywho, we're going to celebrate, um, birthdays with Eric's side of the family. We typically go out to dinner uh, to celebrate birthdays, but his um, brother and, uh, well, my brother-in-law, my sister-in-law are currently living in another state right now. This one is the one that I did last, and this is just the, like, the shoreline and then the trees. Because I'm doing this as a portrait style, I know that you're not going to, like, the whole left-hand side of the card is going to be trimmed down. Um, and then you can see I'm going in here and I'm coloring the edges. 
Normally, I tell you to use a water-based marker so it doesn't bleed into your image. However, because these are, there's no outline here, I'm using my alcohol markers in the hopes that it bleeds into the ink blending and they blend together. Um, so it's fine to use your alcohol markers for that kind of edging. This is the frame that I'm going to cut out and I chose to do the stitched um, instead of the just the rectangle stackers because I thought that it would add a fun little extra element. But Jennifer in her video said to double up on the frame and I didn't and I should have listened, <laughs> I should have listened to her um, because you really do need the two pieces to make it more sturdy. I found a workaround, which I will share with you. Um, but the reason that I even need the frame, okay, you could do all of these with the accordion like spring pop up um, without the frame. The reason that I need the frame is because otherwise I would have been trying to cut the tiniest little accordion folds to fit behind my trees. And to me, it just wasn't worth it. To me, it was easier to cut the frame, do the stenciling one more time, um, and then that way, you know, everything would blend into each other and the frame wouldn't be as apparent. If you didn't want to do the piece on the top, um, like have that outside of the frame, then you certainly could just use the frame as like a window and it would be super cute. You wouldn't even need to do that. But I wanted the extra piece on the outside that kind of covered up the majority of the frame. So that's what you see me doing here. Uh, anywho, so we're going to, normally we do dinner, but they're currently living in another city. Um, so while they're in town, we're going to go to a brunch. Uh, and so that's tomorrow. So I, I really need like needed my card <laughs> in order to be able to um, give him his gift. And then uh, it's unfortunate, but Peanut is actually out of town with his dad. He's on vacation. He just left yesterday. It's so hard for me. It's so challenging when he's not home because um, I worry. And not that I don't want him to have fun. I do. But I just, you know how it is as a parent. When your kid is not in your sight, you're just worried. All right. Now we're on to like the building. We need these little accordion folds to be our springs. So I'm cutting mine at three quarters of an inch. And instead of cutting two of them, I am cutting four of them. And I'm cutting them the entire length of the long side of the card. So they're three and a quarter, or, or no, I'm sorry, they're three quarters by five and a half. And then I'm scoring at the quarter mark on each, for me, honestly, it was easier just to flip them over. But so you either would score at a quarter or um, the quarter and then the half is how you would do it. Um, but I just flipped mine around because it was easier to hold on to my little piece of paper. Somebody had mentioned in another video, they're like, I can't believe you score on your paper trimmer. I do have a, a scoreboard, but I never think to pull it out because I don't score a lot of things. So I just find it easier to just use my paper trimmer and my bone folder. So you want to score at a quarter of an inch two times, basically, is the gist of it. And the reason that I am doing four instead of two is because in Jennifer's video, she has all of her things like either on the very back of the card or glued behind the frame or glued on top of the frame. But I wanted one of my layers because I had four layers. I wanted one of them to be kind of suspended in the middle. And so I needed two of the accordion folds so that I could sandwich one of my layers in between. So now you're just going to fold them into a little accordion fold. So one folds one way, the other one folds the other way. And it, you end up with like this little Z kind of shape on the end. Um, and you're just going to want to push them down really well with your bone folder. Honeybee has two different sizes. They have a small and a large. I have both of them. They're both great. Um, whichever one you feel like would be a better fit for you. Um, but the Teflon Bold Folder, this was like all the rage several years ago. And the reason is, is because it doesn't leave any shininess on your dark cardstock. Um, and I don't even know if they sell other ones anymore in craft stores, to be quite honest. Um, but mine are old. I've had them for, you know, since they came out and, uh, they still work perfectly for all of my scoring needs. Um, so yeah, so that's why we have so many. What else are we doing? 
Oh, so anyway, yeah, Peanut's out of town, um, and I miss him terribly, but I'm I'm sad that he'll also miss the opportunity to go out to brunch with uh, the, the other side of his family, um, but it just kind of is what it is. Uh, you know, ever, it's hard to match up everybody's schedules. So we're going to go. We're going to do that tomorrow. It should be a good time. Eric's parents have been on, just got home from vacation, and so we haven't seen them in over a week, so it'll be good to see them as well. Now, let's move on to the construction. So here, my first layer is obviously my card base. That's the part that has the sky stenciled on it. Um, but my true, like, first layer of, like, the, my first tier, if you will, is this piece right here, which is how the, how the card would look if you just die cut it, stenciled it, and then glued them together. Um, that's how it would look. And it's beautiful. Look how beautiful this scene is. Um, and then this is the next level. This is the one that I want to suspend in the middle, but I made a mistake. Okay. And the reason why I made the mistake, and this is, I'm going to, I'm sharing it with you because I think it's important. I glued on my, um, springs and then I glued the area I want suspended behind it which is correct. Unfortunately, I did it in the wrong order because I wanted there to be a piece that was right up against the frame. And so I was able to pull it off the back. So thank goodness I didn't have to do all of the stenciling again, but I was not be able to pull my springs off. So I just trimmed them off and made new ones. When I do my videos, um, I'm learning sometimes right along with you guys. This is the first pop-up card I've ever made, and I made it so complicated. <laughs> I made it so complicated. Um, but I like to show you that everybody makes mistakes, and everybody is working through the process, um, and it's okay, and they're recoverable, and you don't have to throw out all your hard work. So here, I am gluing the piece that I want to be closest to the frame, which is the piece with the water first, and then I will put on my springs. So just, um, you know, two of those pieces along the frame. And because my frame is just a little bit smaller than my card front, there are um, like just a little, what is that, like a quarter of an inch that hangs off the bottom. And so once I get it in place, I just trim those off. And also, you want to work with liquid glue. I, I know people don't like liquid glue, but you need to have the little bit of wiggle room that it gives you in case you have to move something, adjust something, pull something off. Think about if I had started to assemble this um, the first time around when I made the mistake. If I had started to assemble it with double stick tape, I absolutely would have had to throw that piece out and I would have had to re-stencil an entire new one. Instead, I had a little bit like some glue marks that will be now covered up with my frame and I was still able to keep the piece intact. So that is what you see me putting on now. So I put the springs on, then the, the um, layer that'll be suspended. Then I'll put my next two springs on. So now it'll be sandwiched between my two levels of springs which means when I'm putting the card, like when you're looking at the card, that level will be suspended in the middle. Um, it won't be on the back, but it won't be right up against the frame in the front either. So you, there's, there's other, I mean, there's a billion different ways to do pop-up cards. And like I said, I don't think this one would have been nearly as complicated if I wouldn't have chose this particular die, but it just suited him so well. Um, I just couldn't walk away from it. I had to, I had to make it happen. And I did, and I have no regrets because I think it came out super cute. Um, if he throws it away, I'm going to be mad at him and I'll tell him that at brunch tomorrow. So now I'm putting the glue on the springs and then mounting it to my card base. Um, I know Jennifer put like a paperweight or something on hers, um, to hold it down. I just held it with my hands <laughs> because I don't, I don't have a paperweight. So you just want to add glue just to the spring portion because you want everything else to be able to pop up when you take it out of the envelope. So I'm just lining that up and then pushing down. And then I just held it there with my hands for a few seconds um, while it dried. This glue, this honeybee glue dries relatively quickly. So it wasn't too much of an issue. And then you can see, you know, all these different layers of, of scene that we have. 
the last layer to go on is going to be the one that actually covers up a portion of the frame, which is going to go on the very tippy top, the very first layer. And I, I just, I think it came out super cute. It was a lot of extra work, um, but mostly I think it took me total, I think it took me like two hours, but a lot of that was figuring it out. So the next time I go to make one of these, it won't take me near as long because I already kind of have troubleshooted some of the problems. So you can see there's a good portion of my card that's hanging off the left-hand side. I'm just going to flip this around and trim off what I don't need. I didn't want to trim it beforehand because I wasn't sure how much I would need hanging off since my frame is slightly smaller. So I just went through with each layer and trimmed them. Um, I didn't. The first one was actually the most difficult. The next two were relatively easy. And then obviously, you know, once it's mounted to my card base, you won't be able to see that blue inking that I did previously, but we didn't use. So then that's the basics of the card. Now, if you can see up there at the top how wobbly that frame is, so now I know why Jennifer said you need that extra piece of cardstock to stabilize your frame. So my workaround for that was I cut a piece of foam tape and I chose the Altenew one specifically because the backer is white. So I am going to leave the backer on. I don't want to adhere it to the back of my card because it will change its pop-up quality. I just want to put the foam tape there to structurally support the top of my frame. So I just, I, I left the backer on. I only took it off one side and then adhered it so that it would keep my frame nice and solid. And that totally worked. And then even when you're looking through, you know, the sides or whatever, because that backer is white, nobody even notices it. I went with uh, birthday wishes. I wish I would have done my canoe before I put the whole thing together, quite honestly. But I forgot about it because I was so entranced with getting all my layers on there. I was able to go in and do it. If you don't have this die cut, it cuts a little slit for the oar as well as the canoe. So you just had to like slide them back in there. So it wasn't too challenging. It just would have been easier if I had done it to the layer before the layer was attached to anything else. I also went in with some shimmer because, you know, all that glittery water goodness uh, that you see the sun shining off the lake. And then I added a little bit of glimmer to the top of the um, mountain. And then for the embossing lines in the water, I just went in and highlighted some of those with a white gel pen. And then that's it. That's the whole card. So a four tier pop up card. Um, and I think it looks pretty cool. So you guys have to let me know what you think. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I always appreciate your time and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.